Hey YouTube, Troy here, uh, update on the 90, I got the, the plumbing done, well, for the most part done, I'll kind of go over it here in a second, but uh, um, decided to hard plumb this versus the, the flex tubing, the overflow kit that came with the 90, uh, the bulkheads that were included were for flex tubing, um, you know, it doesn't matter, use flex tubing if you like it. Hard plumbing if you like it. Uh, obviously, flex tubing is far more easier. If you have to move the tank, it's far easier to break the tank down. Um, hard plumbing, you know, I think it looks a little cleaner. You can kind of control where everything goes fairly easily as far as, you know, where your pipes are going to be, where they're not going to be. Um, but uh, let me, let's, uh, let's go over it and I'll kind of explain what I did and so there's the uh, the bulkhead. That's a one inch bulkhead coming down from the drain on on the uh, on the tank, the overflow. Forty five, a union. Another forty five. Down to the bulkhead going into. You can't see it very well because it's black, black on black. But uh, the bulkhead coming into the um, the first stage of the sump. So. Just a couple tips, man. First time I did PVC, it was a mess. So, these unions, they basically screw apart. Use them. <laughs> um, makes this job a hell of a lot easier because, um, really, you can glue this whole piece together. You can glue this whole piece together. The union, you know, basically, you can easier to put them in here. Um, Easier to take if you need to take the sump out. You can take the sump out. Uh, if you need to take the the crappy thing is, is if you need to take that bulk. If you need to actually move the tank itself, you're gonna have to cut this and get the bulkhead out. Um, you're not gonna be able to move the tank with this big crap PVC crap hanging off the bottom of it. You're gonna end up cracking the tank. But a uh, couple points. You'll see here that I have some lines that kind of denote where when I when I dry fit the pipes where the uh, the fitting came up to on the uh, the one inch PVC and you can also see I put these little dash marks here I didn't need these um, because those are for is to make sure that you line up you know the twisting part of it you know make sure that that this angle here is correct to go down into here well you don't really need that because the bulkhead down here turns the bulkhead up here turns you don't really need these slashes. But I do recommend putting the marks here where your fitting, when you dry fit your fitting, where your fitting comes up to. Because obviously these links, the distance between this fitting and this fitting, and here and here are important. Um, and those of you that have glued PVC, as soon as you put the cleaner on, be careful when you put the cleaner on, because when you put the cleaner on, if you run over, this is just a Sharpie mark. It will start to fade out and actually wipe away the Sharpie mark. Um, but put the cleaner on, put the glue on. When you glue the two pieces together, the, the piece will naturally want to, I mean, the glue is kind of like a lubricant. So if I'm gluing this piece into this 45 and I push it into the, push it into, you know, the fitting, it's going to want to squeeze out. So what I do is push it in till this line lines up. And granted, when you dry fit this, you want to make sure you get it in. I mean, this pipe actually ends a good inch into this fitting. So you want to make sure you, you, know, you push it in there pretty well. But make sure the line lines up. And then slowly twist this piece until it's not easy to twist anymore. That's basically when the glue takes hold. And just hold it there for, you know... 20 to 30 seconds and then it won't slide out okay so do that and then you're guaranteed that from your dry fit through your gluing process the distance between all these fittings are what you want them to be when you come back here you're not shocked because some of the pipes are longer than they are supposed to be or shorter or whatnot normally they're normally the distance is longer and then nothing fits right and you're just gonna get pissed so that's my tip um, obviously when you cut this, I cut all my pipe with a hacksaw. 
I use sandpaper to get all the you know the shavings off, and then you sand both where what the the part of the pipe that's going into the fitting, and then you can sand the inside of the fitting if you like. Um, make sure you use the the cleaner prior to the glue, and boom, you're done. I mean, it's not super hard, but that's just a tip that I've used in the past. So that's my drain. Drain's basic, right? 45, 45, union in the center. That's it. This is all glued. This, my supply, and I'll back up here a second. You can see the, the bulkhead, three-quarter inch bulkhead. You see all this nonsense right here, which I'll explain here in a second. Okay. But then it goes down to a, another union to a couple 45s. I, I don't like to use 90s because it's such a sharp angle. It'll cut down on your flow. And then across to another union, to another couple 45s, and then my pump will be down there as soon as I purchase it. And actually, what you can see down there, I got a, um, oh crap. Basically the valve, oh man, guys, I'm spacing out today. But, um, this valve from Bulk Reef Supply, and it's basically to stop the flow of water if, you know, you lose power, you shut your pipe off. Check valve. Gosh, man, guys, I tell you, I lost it this weekend. Anyways, check valve. It's eventually going to go right here. It's going to go up into this 45 fitting, and then, uh, you know, the pipe will go down into the, the pump. Pump's going to be an Eheim 1262, just haven't ordered it yet. Um, so, all right, again, another union, another union up here. The nice thing about this is I don't have to concern myself with, you know, if I want to move this pipe farther in to the tank, these unions will allow me to, you know, move, angle this, angle this out, angle it back, because the union helps me adjust it. Okay. This union's just really here just to make for ease. If I want to just pop this out for some reason, because I want to do maintenance on that check valve or something, or, or maintenance on my pump, I don't have to take this whole apparatus out. So, you know, it's, what is it? Maybe four bucks. They're well worth it. Okay. So what am I doing here? I got a, I got a valve here to basically the end where I can put a flex tubing on here. What I plan on doing with this is I'm going to use this to do water changes. So imagine I shut my pump off, check valve works so the water doesn't backflow into my sump. We'll talk about that later because they don't always work. I don't necessarily trust them. but. Um, it doesn't flow, let's, let's just assume it works, it does its job, doesn't flow back into the tank. I want to change water out. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook a flex tube up to this, have my buckets outside my tank, open up this valve, water's going to run out through the siphon process. So I'll just make sure that my, my uh, locking tubes that are basically in the tank that, you know, that basically flow or create the flow with the with the return water back into the tank are, are pushed down enough that they'll maintain a siphon to draw out however, however much water I want to draw out. I'll use this to basically fill my you know garbage water buckets. When I'm done I'll shut this off and then when I have the clean water I'm going to put a pump in the clean water run the tube up to this as well and then I'm going to plug the pump in here, and then it's on a switch. So I can fire the pump up. It'll pump the clean water back into the tank. When I'm when I'm you know when that bucket's done, you know shut the valve, turn the pump off. You know, move the pump into the next bucket. You know, I'll probably do water changes every about every two weeks, and I'll probably do about. You know, 10 to 15 percent water change. So I'm looking at, you know, maybe 15 gallons every two weeks. And 
And we'll see how that works. You know, if I got to do more or less, we'll, we'll see. So that's what that's for. Um, yeah, so that's what that's for. Uh, the other thing I plumbed was my, uh, my reactor. I have a GFO carbon reactor, bulk roof supply. It's hanging on the side here. Um, basically, it's, it's that half-inch flex tube coming out to a ball valve up to a 90 coming across. What I think I'm going to do is take this and just Velcro tie it here once this is all done. But um comes down, goes to a little Eheim 1000. I think it, it produces like 265, 265 gallons per hour or something like that. So it should be pretty, pretty good. And then, so this is coming out of my first stage up into the reactor going through the two stages in the reactor coming out and then dropping down into my last stage where my pumps gonna be so in here I'll have um, basically the treated water coming down I'll have the main pump I may have the heater in here um, we'll see definitely have the auto top off sensors in here this is the only stage that the water level will change in so the water level will not change in the refugium stage. It will not change in the initial stage where the skimmer is going to be. They'll stay constant there. This is where the water level will dip. So this is where my um, auto top off will be. And I'll, I'll, I'll put that in here uh, eventually, and I'll give you guys a quick video update. But that's what that's for. Um, if you're wondering why I'm raising it so high with a 90 here, I'm not really concerned about flow. I think the pump's going to have more than enough. I might have to throttle the pump back. And actually, the nice thing about that pump is it's got its own throttle. It's got a little switch that you can throttle it up and down, which is kind of nice. But um, when I take these canisters out, the bottom canisters, there's not a whole lot of room. Unfortunately, I got, you know, the sump's occupying the majority of the room. So I actually bring it up back through here. So I wanted... One of these pumps high, or these pipes high enough that I can, you know, bring out the and change out the cartridge without uh, too much hassle, and uh, we'll see how that works. I'll either be kicking myself in the butt or not. But um, other than that, there's, you know, I got my my third PC4. You can see it mounted below. I know I mentioned in a prior video I was going to order another one of those. I don't think there's any other updates inside this tank. Um, but yeah, that's it. Plumbing done. Uh, this weekend, this weekend coming up, I'm going to order probably some of the media for the reactor from Bulk Resupply, and I'm going to order the dry rock. So I'll start, the next video you probably see is probably me just scaping, just doing a dry scape probably in my utility room on the workbench. Um, and uh, I will more than likely epoxy some of the pieces together. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I'm going to dry scape uh, a fair amount of the tank, and then when it's done, I'll probably end up putting the rock in the tank. And uh, I'll just shoot a quick little video on that. But uh, there you have it. That's the plumbing. If you have any questions, uh, leave comments. I'll, I'll try my best to answer promptly. All right. Later.